So when Brian Kelly, when it was first announced that Brian Kelly was going to come to LSU, there was one position group in particular that I was really excited to see develop under this new coaching staff. How will the transfer portal impact that specific position group? I want to get into that on today's edition of Locked on LSU. Well, thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Plus, we're on YouTube as well. So you can find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, wherever you like to listen to your podcast. We're there. Plus, we're on YouTube. Just search Locked on LSU in the search bar. My name is Caroline Fenton, and I am your host, as I am every day. I graduated from LSU. I've been covering LSU football since 2016, and I now host a sports talk radio show in Nashville, Tennessee. But let's get into it. Because when Brian Kelly was first hired, I thought, well, this is a very interesting fit for a lot of reasons. And we can talk about the cultural fit, which I thought I just, you know, rolled my eyes at those two words that were used to describe Brian Kelly so many times. I thought winning is the culture here. The culture is not North versus South. But I'll continue because it was an interesting fit on the football field as well. Because the style of play that LSU has played under historically has been really good defense, running the football, and really good receivers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we've seen that in the past. Just look at the number of insanely talented running backs, defensive linemen, defensive backs, and wide receivers that have been produced from LSU. I mean, Jarvis Landry, Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., Jamar Chase, Tyran Matthew, Derek Stingley Jr., uh, Patrick Queen. I mean, and that's just in recent history. The list of talented players in those position groups goes on and on and on that were great at LSU and then have gone on to, to do great things in the league as well. But one position group, at least in recent history, that LSU hasn't produced a ton of in, in the NFL, that LSU hasn't really utilized a ton um, in terms of offensive scheme, has been the tight end position. Brian Kelly, on the other hand, he is a coach that is known for utilizing and developing tight ends. I mean, Notre Dame, even still, Notre Dame has great tight ends and utilizes the tight ends a lot. I was actually at a Notre Dame game weirdly enough, a few weeks ago. And I thought that one of their tight ends, I was like, man, that's a really big wide receiver because <laughs> it was a tight end that was being used so much in the passing game. So Notre Dame still does it. They did it under Brian Kelly. Mike Denbrock does it as well. He did it when he was uh, offensive coordinator at Notre Dame with Brian Kelly. He did it when he was in Cincinnati as well. Those two between Brian Kelly and between Mike Denbrock are two coaches in particular that are known to utilize and develop tight ends. So that was something when Brian Kelly got hired at LSU. I was really excited to see the development and the usage of the tight end position. I didn't think that they would necessarily be doing it as much this year because the tight end position was so thin because you look at Nick stores, who was a player that I didn't even think was going to be healthy enough to come back to play. But of course he was, it was a player that wasn't used a ton this year and Cole Taylor, um, who was another player that was the only scholarship player on the roster at the time. I mentioned Cole Taylor because I've been updating y'all all week long on the transfer portal. And Cole Taylor is the latest LSU player to enter the transfer portal. So Cole Taylor is a player. Um, he's, a, he's a really solid player for LSU. But I think under this new regime, this offensive system lent so much more to Mason Taylor. Remember, we heard it from Brian Kelly in uh, over the summer. When they were saying, you know, who is one player, one position group in particular that's kind of been a surprise to you, Brian Kelly mentioned Mason Taylor and how his development and really as a true freshman, his development um, on the field and the way that he was be able, being able to produce already in, in summer camp and training camp was something they were really encouraged and really excited about. And now here we are, you know, the end of the regular season has come and gone. The regular season is behind us. We've seen how much Mason Taylor has been able to contribute to this football team. Um, and Cole Taylor really didn't get the, as much usage as I'm sure he expected to. And Cole Taylor came into LSU as a super, super highly rated tight end in 2020. He was one of the highest ranked tight ends um, coming out of high school. But this system, this new regime comes in. 
And Mason Taylor got a majority of the targets and the playing time that Cole Taylor didn't. I mean, in 2022, Cole Taylor only got two starts. He had five receptions for 55 yards. He played in 13 games. He played in all 13 games this season. He had that 26-yard uh, catch against Florida. But really, after that game against Florida, his production tapered off. He didn't have – I don't think he had a single reception since that Florida game. So Cole Taylor, the most recent LSU Tiger to enter the transfer portal – I mean, he's a good player, just hasn't been used a ton under the system. So I don't blame him for wanting to transfer. I don't blame him for looking at Mason Taylor, who just in his true freshman year has emerged as the, the starting tight end favorite and who will only continue to develop. Um, looking at Mac Markway, the uh, 2023 recruit that'll come in actually from my hometown. Um, so Mac Markway coming in in the 2023 class, a four-star tight end out of St. Louis, Missouri. So I think Cole Taylor is looking at this, this tight end room. And although there's not a ton of talent there, it's absolutely a position that needs some bolstering up both in recruiting and also through the transfer portal. But I think Cole Taylor looks at that has probably had conversations with his coaching staff. And I don't know if this has happened, but when they were conducting exit interviews, he probably looked at it and said, Hey, like Mason's getting a majority of the snaps. Mason's getting a majority of the looks. It was Mason Taylor, not Cole Taylor who caught the two point conversion against Alabama to beat Alabama this year. Um, so Cole Taylor tight end, officially entering the transfer portal and will not be part of LSU in 2023. But like I mentioned, tight end is a position I've been looking forward to. It's a position that really we can tell all year long. Mike Denbrock has loved targeting Mason Taylor, almost to the point where it was frustrating me. I was like, can you please stop targeting the freshman tight end and start targeting the all-American wide receivers that you have in the backfield? But I digress because it's paid off because Mason Taylor is one heck of a player. But I mentioned that that's going to be a position group that I've been excited about, but also a position group that they are going to have to add depth to. They're going to have to add veteran players to. So what are some players that LSU should look at in the transfer portal to add some depth to the tight end position? We'll get into that coming up next. But before we do that, I want to tell you about betonline.net because of sport, of course, you know that BetOnline.net is my number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Plus, if you love sports podcasts, those are on BetOnline.net as well. That's the best part about it is it's not just a place to look at trends or betting odds. It's not just a place to wager for bets. It's also a place to get a lot of really good sports information. They've got every professional and amateur league out there. They've got football, basketball, soccer, and esports bet it all at betonline.net. Plus, it's the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Well, thanks for making Locked on LSU your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Cole Taylor, LSU tight end, entering the transfer portal. That leaves Mason Taylor, Mac Markway coming in on the 2023 class. But LSU is going to have to add some depth to the tight end position, especially considering how much Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock love to use the tight end. So who's out there? Who is available? Where it stands right now, there's really not a whole ton of tight ends that are in the transfer portal. But looking at the top three, top three portal tight end prospects first and foremost one that I was excited about when he first announced that he was entering the transfer portal and now I think I'm gonna little, going to get a little bit disappointed because I'm almost certain that this player will not be headed to LSU but it, the first and foremost that I want one that I want to highlight is Jaheim Bell tight end out of South Carolina he's visiting Florida State this weekend and once he announced that he was going to visit Florida State I looked at uh, 24-7 sports and already the crystal ball prediction was 100% Florida State. So maybe that changes after this weekend. Um, maybe Jaheim Bell gets there and they realize it's not the right fit. Um, I'm almost certain that's probably where he's going to end up. But no commitment has been made. Nothing's been made official. So Jaheim Bell to LSU could still potentially be an option. Uh, but I look at Jaheim Bell. He's a player um, that's really talented. 
And he's a player that was completely underutilized. 6'2", 207. Um, you could use a little bit more, you know, a little bit more bulk um, to, for the tight end position. But he was a player that I don't think South Carolina utilized enough this year. He had 25 receptions, 231 yards in the season, two touchdowns. And then you, he added on 261 rushing yards. So he's a tight end that really, truly can do both. He's a tight end that you can use in the run game. He's a tight end that you can use in those short passing situations. Um, but like I said, wasn't utilized enough at South Carolina is visiting Florida State this weekend. So I'm sure we'll get a little bit more clarity about where Jaheim Bell is headed next year after his visit with Florida State. Um, I don't even know if LSU is interested in him, but it is one tight end in particular in this small class of tight ends that are in the transfer portal um, that has been that has kind of sparked my interest. A four star tight end prospect coming out of high school. Um, he's still got plenty of years of eligibility. So that's one that I'm keeping my eye on. The second one, and it's interesting because, I mean, I, I watched a, a bit of South Carolina football this year. Uh, I'm not going to call myself a South Carolina expert, but I watched South Carolina games. Um, these next two, I'm not even going to act like I watched any of their games this season. I don't even know how to watch these games this season. So this is completely based off of research that I've seen. But the second tight end um, that I want to highlight here is Rivaldo Fairweather out of Florida International University, which, cool name, great name. He's 6'5", 210 pound tight end. Um, coming out of high school, he was he played on both sides of the football. He played offensively and defensively. And he had 23 tackles and six sacks. And he was a uh, tight end in high school, which is nuts. And he's a huge guy. I mean, 6'5", 210 pounds. It's a great size for a tight end, great height for a tight end. Uh, but in 2022, he had 28 receptions, 426 yards, and three touchdowns. And he was also utilized a good bit in, in deep ball situations at Florida International. Um, most of the time was just, again, those short passing situations. Um, but he's kind of used as a receiver as well. Um, he had a 75-yard reception against MTSU earlier this season. Um, he's a good player. You know, he's a player that's looking for more opportunity. And I think he's a player that has been able to prove himself at a lower level and is looking to kind of break through into that next level and to utilize his size. And going into the season, he was on the John Mackey Award watch list. John Mackey Award, um, of course, goes to the top tight end of the country. We learned last night that went to Brock Bowers. No shocker there. Um, but Rivaldo Fairweather out of Florida International University, a uh, four-star tight end, like I mentioned, coming out of high school, another one to, to uh, keep your eye on. And finally, I mean, I said, I'm not going to act like I watched Florida International University. I'm not even going to act like I watched any shorter university football. I didn't even know that the school existed, but they've got a pretty darn good tight end coming out of it. Kyle Morlock, 6'7", 245 pounds. I mean, that you, you, you cannot coach a size like that. Um, Kyle Morlock, a tight end, like I mentioned, coming out of Shorter University. He's a top three ranked tight end in the transfer portal. And like I said, it's not a huge group, but the fact that you have a, a D2 guy out of a school that I've never even heard of, and he's in the top three prospects in the transfer portal for this position group, I think is pretty impressive. He was an All-American this season, had 30 receptions for 446 yards. He's had He's got a ton of D1 offers already. I believe he's gotten uh, offers from Purdue, uh, from Tennessee, from a bunch of D1 programs from across the country. That's a name that even though might not know anything about him, may not have ever heard about him, um, there's plenty of other schools that have taken notice. So I'm looking at Jaheim Bell, South Carolina tight end in the transfer portal, Rivaldo Fairweather, Florida International tight end in the transfer portal, and Kyler, Kyle, Kyle Morlock, a tight end out of Shorter University, a D2 program, who was massive, again, 6'7", 245 pounds, who's already racked up a bunch of D1 offers. Those are my three tight end targets for LSU to look at. And again, there's so much more information to come. There are so many more players that have yet to en enter the transfer portal or have yet to make up their mind about entering the transfer portal, specifically in this position, but across every position that we'll start to see enter more and more. So I'll continue to update what needs LSU has, what players are out there that LSU could target. But for right now, the tight end position, I think, is, is one of three position groups of need for LSU. One, because this is a coaching staff that loves the tight end. And two, 
this was already a very thin position group going into this season, and it's going to get even thinner now that Cole Taylor has entered the transfer portal. So you got Mac Markway coming in in 2023. You've got Mason Taylor, who balled out in his freshman season, absolutely proved himself in his first year, and is looking to take that next step forward um, in the next season. But coming up next, we've got even more transfer portal entries coming out of LSU. We'll keep you updated on that in just one second. Well, it was also just announced a few hours ago that Cam Wire, LSU offensive lineman, will be entering the transfer portal. Now, it's interesting. The offensive line position is a position that going into the 2022 season, I was really nervous about because I just didn't think, to be completely honest with you, there was enough experience or there was enough talent on the offensive line. I was worried about it. The defensive back position group and the offensive line position groups. The offensive line group really proved to have a lot more depth than I expected because even though there may not have been as many bodies on the offensive line or in the offensive line room as I expected or as maybe other programs may have, LSU had so many swing tackles. LSU had so many, um, you know, rotational players where if you had – um, let's say, so to speak, a guard go down. Well, you could have a tackle on the bench that can swing over to guard, or you can move your tackle over to guard, and you can put that guy on the bench in the tackle position. I have to give uh, you know my hats off to Mike Denbrock and Brian Kelly for, for approaching the offensive line in such a creative way, because LSU was riddled with injuries on the offensive line all season long. And even though most of them weren't season-ending injuries, you know, look at Will Campbell, who had the flu against Tennessee, but you still have to play a little bit of a puzzle game of, okay, who do we move over to left tackle? And then how do we address that hole that we created by moving these players over here? And one player in particular, that not just this season, that was one of the best at it, but has done it throughout his entire career at LSU, is Cam Wire. And Cam Wire announced today that he is entering the transfer portal. Cam Wire has been with LSU since 2018. He redshirted that year, um, didn't see any action in 2018, came back in 2019, again, redshirted in 2019. And ever since then has kind of been used as a utility lineman. Um, he came in as a true tackle. He played a majority of his high school career at left tackle, but he was able to play on the right side. He was able to play on the left side. He was able to fill in at guard as well. In 2020-21, um, he was moved around a lot. And we saw that too this year, except he didn't get the starts I that I can only assume that he wanted. He got the starting nod against Florida State and then lost his starting job against Florida State. I think we can all remember that the, the protection in that game was abysmal at best when Jaden Daniels was running around for his life. Um, but he, uh, but he filled in and contributed in three more games after the Florida State game. Didn't start, um, but was able to kind of plug and play, like I mentioned, the little puzzle game um, that the that the offense was forced to play throughout this year, but never got the starting nod, never really had that breakthrough game. Um, so he's entering the transfer portal, and I don't blame him. He wasn't, be, he wasn't able to carve out a starting spot for himself, so Cam Wire is entering the transfer portal. Offensive line is a position that LSU absolutely is going to have to address. Offensive line is uh, was already a thin position going into this season. And even though LSU has so many utility pieces, I think that we've seen, you know, how whenever this offensive line didn't have consistency throughout the year, this team struggled. I don't think that – I don't remember what week it was when LSU – but it was well into the season. Maybe it was four or five weeks into the season when LSU hadn't had a single back-to-back -back week where they had a consistent offense, starting offensive line. Um, and that proved to be an issue. So while those utility players are important, while it's so nice to have those players that you can say, okay, we need you at guard. Go play guard. We need you at left tackle. Please go play left tackle. It's great to have those players. You need your certified starters. You need your bona fide right tackles. That, that's their job. That is their career job, and they can do that job. At least you didn't have a whole lot of those this year. Will Campbell, he's a left tackle. He is going to be your starting left tackle moving forward. He's not a swing guy. He's your tackle. You need more guys like that. You need guys that you can count on. You need both. 
Um, but that's what LSU is going to have to search for in the transfer, transfer portal moving forward. Big guys and experienced guys to add on on top of the extra year of experience that John Emery and Will Campbell have added on both of their respective ends on the offensive line this season. So that's what I want to get into on the next episode of Locked on LSU is what are some offensive line prospects? And even on the other side, LSU needs some depth in the trenches on the offensive line and on the defensive line. So I'll do some, some line searching, try and find our big guys that got their hands in the dirt, how LSU can use the transfer portal to add some depth, to add some size, and to add some seniority on both sides of the offensive and the defensive line. That's what we will get into on the next episode of Locked on LSU. But thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.